Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu La syarika lahu fi rububiyyatihi wa uluhiyyatihi wa asma'ihi wa sifatihi Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alaih Wa ala azwajihi ya tahirat Ummahatul mu'minin Wa ala khulafai rasyidin Wa ala ashabihi ya jama'in Wa ala kulli man yataba'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin Qala Allahu azza wa jal fil Qur'anil karim أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَلَرْحَامُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَلَرْحَامُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him We seek His help and aid And we ask Allah to forgive us We ask Allah to protect us We ask Allah to keep us rightly guided We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own selves And from the sins that we commit Indeed, whoever Allah guides, there is none who can lead astray. And whoever he causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is none deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. The best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated, and every religious innovation is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a misguidance. And every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. Wa'yadhu billah. May Allah protect all of us from the fire of hell. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ibadullah. Ayyuhal Muslimun. O Muslims. It is well known from the religion of Islam. As a matter of fact, in the heart and consciousness of every Muslim and every believer, one's happiness lies in believing in what Allah Azza wa Jal reveals and what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has communicated and commanded us to do. So it is from the foundation of our belief for every Muslim man and every Muslim woman that the guidance of Allah is better than any other guidance. And the judgment of Allah and His Rasul and His Messenger is the best and is the only judgment that we should seek out. And we should live according to that belief. And not only should we believe that in our hearts, but our lives should reflect that as well. That we put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forced in anything and everything to judge between us. And it is very clear in the Quran, in so many verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Allahu waliyu alladhina amanu 
يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ That Allah is your wali, Allah is your ally and your supporter. And He takes them out of darkness. He takes us out from the darkness into light. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our supporter, is our best judge to take us out from darkness into light. And it is only through Allah that you will be able to escape the darkness of this life and the fitna and the evil that surround us today. It is only through the help and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us that he has brought us out from the darkness and we are in light. Alhamdulillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, وَإِن تُطِعُوهُ تَهْتَدُوا If you listen to him, if you surrender to him and obey him, that you will be guided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made submission and surrender to the judgment of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which really reflects the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A sign of iman. It's a sign of iman when you put Allah and the Rasul above everything else. And he made submission and surrender to that judgment a sign of iman. And he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَدَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by your Lord, by the one who created you. They are not going to have iman until they make you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the judge, the one who will finally decide what is right and what is wrong. Fima shajara baynahum, when they have disputes among them, disputes during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or even disputes today, even ikhtilaf today, that they will take this matter to you and make you the judge. And after you declare that judgment, how did they receive it? That they find no discomfort in their hearts. They accepted whatever you have decided for them. وَيُسَلِّمُوا taslima. And outwardly, they completely submit to it. So on the outside and the inside, they completely submit to Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They completely submitted to what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had said. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also made it a sign of hypocrisy to turn away from the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to turn away from the judgment of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not to honor them, not to respect them, not to be pleased with anyone, with any of the judgment, to be pleased with others' judgment, to be pleased with anyone else's judgment besides Allah's judgment and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِينَ يَزْعُمُونَ أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَحَاكَمُوا إِلَى التَّاغُوتِ That here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, He says, do you not see those who claim that they believe in what has been revealed to you and in what has been revealed before, that they desire ta'gut? What is ta'gut? Anything that opposes Allah and the Messenger is considered as ta'gut. So they seek the judgment of ta'gut, and this is a claim with their mouths. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا أَصْوَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ 
So what will be their case? How will they react? What will they say? What will they do when a disaster will strike them because of that choice that they make? Because of leaving aside the judgment of Allah and the judgment of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and not accepting it fully and totally in their lives and not accepting and translating that into their own lives. What will be their case when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a disaster and anyone who seeks a judgment other than Allah and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is actively seeking and imploring a disaster into their lives and the effect of this will be felt sooner or later. So if you turn away from the judgment of Allah and you turn away from the judgment of the, the, the Sunnah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you're inviting disaster into your lives. So this is like the other ayah that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ that let those who did digress and let those who divert and reject the command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam let them be aware lest something terrible happens to them a fitna a fitna that will overtake them or adhabun alim a great punishment O Muslims today inshallah my message is that we put Allah and we put the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam above and beyond. We put those Allah and the Messenger in everything in our lives. We put Allah and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first and foremost in everything of our lives. So either a great punishment that will come to them or a fitna will, will, will leave them confused after they have iman that they will lose it. And all of that is a consequence of going against the commands of Allah and going against the commands of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. O Muslims, this should be clear in our lives, that this should be clear in our hearts should be clear in our families and our communities that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has de decided something, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something, the matter is settled. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said something, the matter is settled. We should have no say about it. We should have no if about it. We should have no say about it. We should have no other opinion. No other desire, no other saying to contradict what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also commanded us to do. But only submit and surrender to it. And we want to take you to two examples. To two examples in the Quran and show you the consequences. One of compliance and following Allah, what Allah commanded, and another example of not following it, not complying with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded. And the first one, the last two ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah, that, that there is a reason why they have been revealed, because the ayah that precedes them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبَكُمْ يُحَاسِبَكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ That whether you bring into open what is in your minds or you conceal it, Allah will hold you responsible for it. Meaning, whatever you bring out, whatever you do, and whatever you conceal in your heart, that Allah will hold you accountable for it. Now, when the companions, when the, the, the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, when they heard this verse, when they heard this verse, that 
they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I want you to imagine and put yourself in their place. I want you to imagine and put yourself that you're receiving this verse for the first time, that Allah will hold you accountable for what's outward and what's inward. So when they heard this verse and the taqwa that they have, it, it was such that they really took this verse seriously and they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they understood that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will hold us for even our thoughts. So they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, they said, O Prophet of Allah, this, is, this we cannot bear, that this is something that we cannot bear, that this is very heavy on us, that we have been commanded to pray and to give charity and to do all of these things, and we have been doing it. We have been doing it, all of it. We have been giving charity, we fight in the way of Allah, all of these things we can perform. But with this ayah, to be responsible for everything on the inside and the outside, O Prophet of Allah, that we cannot tolerate. That's too difficult for us. And see here, O Muslims, the response of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then we will see the response of the companions, radiallahu anhu. <clears throat> he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Aturiduna an taqulu kama qala alladhina min qablikum, sami'na wa asayna, bal qulu sami'na wa ata'na. That do you want to be like the people before you who said that we hear and we disobey? No. Say, we hear and we obey. Sami'na wa ata'na. That everything, all of it that has been come to us, say, we believe and we obey. We accept and we are ready to make changes. We obey. And there is a really great wisdom in what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying here. That all that comes from Allah, even though you don't understand it, there is wisdom behind it. But if you believe in it, and if you submit to it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will relieve you of any burden or any difficulty. So we'll give you an exit, we'll give you an explanation, we'll give you a way out as long as you believe and you submit to it. So they say, when they believed in it and their tongue surrendered to it, and when they submitted to it, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed the last two ayah of Surah Baqarah. آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون that the messenger and the believers with him believe in what has been revealed upon them from his Lord and they all believe in Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieved them from the burden from any difficulty that they thought was too overwhelming and too difficult for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wus'aha. Allah does not burden any human being with more than he is able to bear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not burden you more than you can bear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors them in this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors you also in this ayah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that these two ayah, they were revealed to me from under the throne of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when he went to Mi'raj. <clears throat> so no other prophet has been given this. And the reason it, it was revealed was because the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam listened to him and comply with him and they said to him, we believe and we obey. So, the lesson from this, my brothers and sisters, is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us something 
And the Prophet وسلم, told us something. Do we have our own opinion about things? Do we say that it cannot fit into my schedule? It cannot fit into my daily activity, my daily program? Or do we submit to it? Do we say, Sami'na wa ata'na? Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdata mi lisani yafqahu qawli amma ba'd Now contrast that with the people of Musa alayhi salam When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them Udukhulul ardal muqaddasah Enter the sacred land and fight the people who are in it And the people of Musa hesitated and not only did they hesitate, they rejected the direct command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, Ya Musa, inna fiha qawman jabbarin. That they say they are mighty people and as long as they are inside, we are never going in there. That we would never even attempt to enter that city or comply with Allah's command. And interestingly, Subhanallah, two of the people who had Iman interjected in the middle and told them, Qala rajulani min alladhina yakhafuna, yakhafuna Allah, an'am Allahu alayhi. The two people who had Iman, they said, udkhulu al-bab, they said, enter the door. Two, two, two men who fear Allah, encourage them to enter into the door do it you're going to win you will defeat them in other words they were telling them to just comply with what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to do so just open the door and just enter and allah will give you from his support and his guidance but what they say what was their reply they say musa you want to fight and you, you and your rub, you go and fight. We are sitting right here. We are not moving. So what was the consequence? And they had the opportunity to enter the sacred land and be part and live there. It is forbidden. What was the consequence? It is forbidden for them to enter for 40 years. See? When you, when you disobey the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, blatantly disobeying the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the consequence, that when you blatantly, Allah commands you to do this, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commands you to do this, and you blatantly disobey, and you have your own opinion about it, and you listen to someone else, that no, I'm going to follow this person, I'm going to follow my madhab. I'm going to follow this school of thought. My brothers and sisters, regardless what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what this, you have an authentic sunnah, this takes precedence. And, it, and there is another incidence, there is another instance that where the companions, they would comply and they would follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with everything that he did. There was one incident that Abu Huray radiallahu an, that he said, that Abu Huray radiallahu an, he said, if it's not for Abu, Abu Bakr, that Allah would not be worshipped on earth. And once someone get so upset and said, how can you say that? But then he explained that during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
he selected an army under the leadership of Usama ibn Zaid to go out. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away. So after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he faced uh, many difficulties, people leaving Islam, and what he did, he said, no, I will follow what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, and what he enforced, and I will send the army out regardless. And he did, and then even even the, the non-Muslims are wrong there. They look at the army and they were saying that, you know what? The Muslims are strong. So they, this shows that even whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, they were ready to accept. Another incident that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, there was one incident whereby there was someone by the name of Muhammad and everyone was rebuking him and then Umar radiallahu an he said you know what I'm gonna change your name to Abdurrahman and then that person told Umar ibn al-Khattab do you know who gave me this name it was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an he said I will not change your name, go away from me. I will not do it as long as the Prophet wasallam did something. I, who am I to go against it? So my brothers and sisters, O oh Muslims, my message to you today is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided something for us, and the Prophet wasallam also decides something for us, then who are we? To, to, to have a say, who are we to say that we will go against it? Who are we to say that we will listen to what our, our Imam told us? Or who are we to say that we will, we will listen to what this person has take precedence? So my message is that we should always stick to Quran and Sunnah in everything that we do. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. We pray, Ya Allah, help us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us with every day of our lives. Ya Allah, help us so that we could be able to follow Quran and Sunnah in every matter of our lives. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you, Ya Allah, help us make this religion easy for us. Help us to follow it with our, with our families and our communities, Ya Allah. Make it easy for us to practice our religion. Make it easy for us to accept what we have and make it easy for us not to follow others, not to follow the dhulumat, the darkness. Ya Allah, keep us in the light, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaab al-nar. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannatu wa ma karraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونسألك الخير ما سألك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من الشر ما استعاذك منه عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك يا حي يا قيوم وبرحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقيم الصلاة